Hello all, welcome to this module. Today we will discuss about writing resumes. So when I talk about resumes, the first thing that students ask is, what's the difference between resume and a CV? So CV stands for Curriculum Vitae. And CV is the long history of all that you have done, which is the work history, the longer version. Whereas the shorter version of your curriculum vitae is what we call the resume. Resume generally runs for one to two page. At max, you should have two pages and not more than that. So I have taken a few snippets of my resume um, in order to discuss a few points that I think is important when we talk about resume writing. Now, start your resume with your full name and then the area of residence. So I stay in Chennai, therefore I write Chennai there, along with your contact information, first the phone number and then the Gmail ID or your email ID. Then comes a very important point, which is you should always write an overview of your resume. Why this? Because your boss or the interviewer or the manager of the company will not have time to read or go through your entire CV or your resume. So it's important that you give a brief overview with all the important points that you think their attention should go. So it is important that you come up with a precise overview, which is all the important points that you think your manager should go through. So in here, let's read read out uh, the overview that I have uh, in my CV, uh, that I have in my resume. I have graduated from IIT Madras with an integrated master's in English studies from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences in 2015. So IIT Madras in bold, your institution, the institution from where you have graduated is very important. And what is what else is important is the year in which you have graduated. So these two I am highlighting in bold. Now the second line, why have I marked that in yellow? It's because you should not include such lines in your CV. I am a result-oriented and performance-driven development professional with more than five years of experience. No, your qualities, it's for the manager to find out. It's for the CV to speak. The work that you have done so far will talk about your qualities. So you should not speak for yourself. You should not speak about your qualities. So I've seen a lot of students writing, I'm a very hardworking professional, and which is not required. And similarly, if you look at the sentence, um, I have, I'm a result-oriented and performance-driven development professional with more than five years of experience. Be precise. Do you have 5.5 years of experience? Write 5.5 years of experience. Do you have eight years of experience? Write eight years of experience. Um, even 20 years is more than five years of experience, right? So um, be very precise. Then in my career, I have led the design and implementation of various interventions to improve the quality of education. So here I have broadly written what my area of work is, which is education. My expertise lies in academic and action research, teaching, design and implementation of projects and leading large-scale multilateral projects with the government and non-government organizations. Again, very important. Please do not confuse your passion with that of expertise. A lot of students I have seen, they have written that teaching is their area of expertise. And when I ask them, what have you thought? They say, no, I haven't thought anything, but I know that I'm a good teacher or I'm skilled at teaching. No, your area of expertise, you can mention all that only if you have done that, only if you have experience in those areas. Similarly, it's also important for you to talk about the people whom you have associated yourself with for the work that you have done here um, so i have written i am proficient in working with a diverse range of stakeholders including bureaucrats knowledge partners government organizations school principals teachers and students 
I work in educational research and practice and the primary areas of interest include linguistics, linguistic education, multilingualism, multiculturalism, social inclusion and policy and governance. So I had included this line uh, at a time when I was looking for some research positions as well. So I this overview is a good blend of uh, academic and non-academic work. So someone who goes through it, uh, kinds of um, you know, kind of read, or it's quite explicit from the um, overview that I have done both academic and non-academic work. So your target should be that if you're really good at um, managerial work, you know, um, you know, highlight those parts. And if you're looking for a managerial position, highlight those parts in particular. If you're looking for a academic position, then highlight those parts of your work. The next is publications. Maybe not everybody is interested in publishing, but I would say that if you have publications, it's definitely a brownie point. Maybe you're not inclined towards academics, in which case you can write uh, some editorials for some well-known newspapers or some well-known magazines. Um, they're all brownie points, I must tell you. Uh, this definitely speaks a lot about your passion, your 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 talent, and your you know interest in uh, public or you know social issues. Next comes research experience. All of you can definitely add your uh, thesis, um, bachelor's thesis, um, which will be close to what six months to one year, right? Um, as a part of your research experience. If you have more research experience, do add it up. Uh, the thing that uh, you need to note here is use different verbs to talk about your work. Here I have used word, conducted, rated, tested. Do not keep using just one verb such as worked. I've seen a lot of kids write worked. Um, for this thing, I worked in this thing, I worked for that. You know, rather than, you know, use vivid or, you know, different um, verbs to describe your work or the nature of work you have done. Next comes awards and scholarships. Write everything that comes to your mind. Um, every single award and scholarship that you have got. Um, <clears throat> again, you can highlight important uh, points that you think um, the jury or the manager should look at. Next comes professional experience. The internships that you have done can also be included in the professional experience. Um, so all that you have so far, you know, I, I'm pretty sure you would have um, done a couple of internships or um, you know, maybe you worked before taking up this course. You can add all that as a part of your professional experience. Then comes the education and skills. In the column for education, you write the program, then the institution, and the percentage in CGPA, and then the year of completion. Similarly, it's very important for you to write about skills because that speaks a lot about you, what your passion is. Um, what you have done so far in life. Um, so as a part of skills, you can write your technical skills, language skills, and then your hobbies. Language skills, English, Hindi, Tamil, Malayalam, Sanskrit, and French. Microsoft Access and Adobe Photoshop. Trained Bharatanatyam dancer for four years, skilled in painting and crafting. And finally, you can write about the position of responsibility, um, particularly the one that you've had in your <coughs> college. So you could say you are, you know, I was a curriculum co coordinator back then. Um, I was also a part of the NSS National Service Scheme uh, as a volunteer. So all that can be written as uh, positions of responsibility. So that was a short tutorial on resume writing. I hope you liked the session. I will meet you with a different topic on a different day. Until then, stay safe, take care, bye.